So you want to be a real estate investor, but where do you start? How do you know what information and sources to trust? That's where I come in. I'm Johnny Catani, and this is the Investor Relations Real Estate Podcast. Hey guys, real quick, before we start, go to investwithkatani.com and download my free ebook, Is Commercial Real Estate Recession Proof? Now to today's show. What's up, guys? Happy Friday, TGIF. Welcome to another episode of Friday Follow-Up here on the Invest Relations Real Estate Podcast. I am your host, Johnny Katani, and we did it. We got through another week. Uh, very excited. Um, we're almost to September, which is absolutely insane. Uh, feels like time is just flying by. Um, hopefully you guys have some fun Labor Day plans. I am headed to Dallas, um, which I'm very excited for a little bit of business and a little bit of pleasure. So that will be a fun trip, but very excited that you're listening today. Um, pretty excited to chat on a couple subjects today. Uh, if you listened last week, you know that I basically introduced myself, uh, you know, kind of my Reader's Digest version of how I got here, how I started Katani Capital Group. And this week, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, structure and a little bit about uh, sort of invest relations, which, um, you know, crazy that on the Invest Relations podcast, we want to talk about invest relations, but we're going to because when it comes to raising capital, uh, invest relations is basically your your job, right? And invest relations is a loose term, um, and we'll kind of get to that. But last week, based where we ended was how I started Katani Capital Group. Um, you know, kind of the foundation for that, which is built on and predicated on you know um, my mentor Hunter Thompson, ASM Capital, and kind of the foundations that he's discovered along the way that seemed to work the best. And so this week, what I want to talk about is kind of structure and, and, you know, a lot of questions that I get when asked about being a capital raiser is what does a structure look like when you raise capital uh, for a deal? So um, I'm going to touch a little bit on that and then we will talk about um, invest relations. So uh, there's a few different structures you can take. Uh, the most common is what they call like a, an SPV, a special purpose vehicle. I mentioned that last week. Um, also called fund to fund model. Essentially what you're doing is you're setting up a, a fund, right? And I, if you're watching on YouTube, I put fund in quotations there. Essentially it's a single asset fund, meaning that the one single asset that you're raising capital for will be the only thing, the only asset in that fund. And essentially what that does is when the um, general partnership, so um, I guess let's back up a little bit here. Uh, let's talk about syndications, right? So basically you may have heard that term before if you're new. Syndication is essentially a, a group of people who pull their, um, their capital together, their money together to um, for one single purpose. Uh, you have movie syndications. So when you see a few different producers or um, executive producers on a single movie project, that's a syndication. Uh, in this case, we're talking about commercial real estate assets. Um, we'll use the most common one, which is an apartment building, right? Multifamily. So a group wants to go in buy a multifamily apartment complex. And let's say it's a hundred units and each unit is, you know, you know, so they want to buy a hundred unit apartment complex. It's, um, you know, 20, uh, 20,000 a unit, let's say, which um, you're not really going to find anymore. But for easy math, we'll say it's $20,000 a unit, $20,000 a unit times a hundred units. That's $2 million, right? So not everybody just has $2 million laying around. And so what ends up happening is they will get a group together and say, okay, we're going to buy it and operate it, but we need to raise money for the down payment, for closing costs, for due diligence. 
um, for any capital expenditures, what they call CapEx, which is essentially any um, upgrades or, you know, um, fixing what the deferred maintenance, right? Deferred maintenance, essentially uh, anything that needs to be fixed that the owner put off, right? Deferred. Right. So, you know, it's a $2 million purchase, but let's say by the time you put, you know, thousand dollars a unit, a thousand dollars, you know, do a thousand dollars per unit, there's a hundred thousand dollars in capital expenditures. Plus let's say there's another, you know, $50,000 in exterior, right? Let's say maybe it needs a new roof. So there's $150,000 on top of your $2 million, right? Then you've got your uh, you know, you're typically going to finance maybe 70% of it. So you need to get a loan, uh, which is going to have fees associated with it. You're going to have inspection fees. You're going to have other due diligence fees, right? Maybe you, you know, need to have um, someone come out and look at the HVAC, right? The air conditioning and heating. So all of that is going to be, you know, calculated on, you know, a a basis and you're going to come up with a total price. Let's say for the sake of the argument, 2.5 total, right? So $2 million in purchase and then another half a million dollars in CapEx. And then typically you're going to have a fund, which you call working capital, which is like your rainy day fund, right? So uh, maybe something, maybe a repair costs more than you thought, or maybe by the time you get into one or two units, they need even more repairs than you expected, right? So you have a working capital. So talking about $2.5 million, not everybody just has that laying around. The general partnership will then go out and um, raise money from investors. And, you know, through that, they'll raise basically, you know, essentially, usually you'll raise about 30% of the total acquisition or the, the total of what you'll need. So you know, quick math in my head, which I cannot do when I'm on the spot, um, despite how much I'd love to be able to. So that's going to be 750,000, right? So what that means is you'll have your uh, general partnership, and then you'll have your limited partners. Limited partners are the people who brought in the money that equals that 750,000. Then from there, you will um, you know, raise that money, you'll give them a return, typically going to have some sort of cash flow associated with it, meaning, you know, every uh, maybe monthly, right? So you collect rent every month, that's your cash flow. Um, you know, that's going to be your obviously your monthly fees that the tenants pay, uh, late fees, uh, admin fees for new leases, um, you know, Maybe you have a laundromat that you charge for like a coin operated laundry, um, you know, uh, there, there's different things, right? We don't want to get too into the weeds just yet, but, you know, so you'll give them a return of that, a portion of that um, uh, on their money, typically going to be anywhere from six to 8%, right? So if you invest $100,000, anywhere from six to $8,000 a year in cash flow, and then there'll be some kind of uh, split at the end. And we'll get into that later and we'll get into the, the weeds and all of that. But basically the, the makeup is a general partnership, which are going to be the people who operate. Um, they're going to take on all of the, the risk of owning the asset, right? So all the, the loan risk, right? They may have to have a guarantor on the loan. They take on all that risk as a limited partner. You're um, removed from that risk, but you're putting up your hard-earned money in hopes that this operator is going to, you know, get this apartment complex up and running and at market rent and stabilized and eventually sell it for more than they bought it for, right? And the passive investors are called the limited partners. So you've got your general partnership and your limited partnership. That's going to equal your syndication, um, you know, what have you. And so from there, you're going to, um, you know, raise the money. They're going to put the money forward. What I do is I will typically, you know, let's say that the group that's a general partner can only raise a hundred, 
you know, let's say they can only raise 250,000. So they need someone to bring in another half a million. I, with my group of investors will look at the deal, look at the operators and let's just say for the sake of the argument, I approve everything and then I'll send it out to my group. And let's say I raise a half a million instead of coming in and being a part of the general partnership. What I'll do is I will create my own LLC um, for this uh, deal. And that LLC will also be its own general partnership and limited partnership. So I'm the general partner of Katani Capital Group. And then the limited partners are my investors. And so when you look at the uh, balance sheet for the general partnership, it shows, you know, their group. And then it shows Katani Capital Group as a limited partner. But in that is my group of investors. Let's say it's five investors who put up $100,000, right? So what I do and what, what um, you know, what a, a capital raiser does is, is basically, you know, brings the, the investors to the deal. And then I will typically get a, a portion of the deal. But uh, um, a portion of what I raise, um, you know, typically anywhere from two to 3%. I always invest alongside my investors. So I put my own money in as a limited partner as well. And so, you know, over the life of the deal, I'll make a, a certain percentage, um, you know, from, from cash flow and, and raising the money, right? So that's a, a very basic uh, explanation of how the deal structure works in the world of commercial real estate, in this case, multifamily. And as it gets bigger, these just get, you know, uh, a bigger and bigger numbers, essentially, right? And so essentially what I'll do is, you know, I, you know, have my own paperwork that my investors need to sign and, and my own lawyer fees and all of that. And, you know, that will, just basically show as one entity as a limited partner on the deal. And then I take care of everything in terms of, you know, the distribution will come as one big hold to typically to the, uh, to my group. And then I spread it out uh, to, um, to my investors, right? So that's the basic uh, makeup of what I do, the foundation of my business and, and how it will operate. Now, as most of you know, I'm currently in the middle of my first ever raise for Katani Capital Group. So I have not put this into practice yet. I know how it all works because I've studied it, learned from my mentors, a lot of people in the industry who do this, a lot of people on my podcast who do this. So you guys, you know, if you've been following along, you've learned that as well, right? And so you, you have an understanding, but if you're new, that's essentially how my business is structured. So I'm not the one who's doing the day-to-day -day operations, the acquisition, the asset management. I don't handle any of that because from a um, uh, partnership uh, perspective, I'm a limited partner. Katani Capital Group is a limited partner. We have no say in uh in day-to-day -day operations now you may be wondering johnny why wouldn't investors just go straight to the deal why would they go through you well there's a few answers to that one you may not even know about the deal or the operator without um without me or without you know a capital raiser Right. We'll use Hunter, for example, you know, a lot of the deals that he brings to his investors, they wouldn't find without him. Uh, that's one reason. Number two is the due diligence, right? A lot of investors are busy professionals and do this passively. So they don't have the time to fly out and shake hands with the operators, see the asset, walk through the asset with them like I do and like I will do. Uh, for my deals and when I find a new operator. Um, right now, I'm partnering with people who have done all of this and can verify all of their due diligence. So um, I'm not currently walking the, I did not walk the project that I'm raising for currently. Um, also, it's 10 different assets, it's a portfolio deal, but 
uh, my partner has not only invested with them personally, but, you know, has raised money for them in the past, so on and so forth. So there's a lot that goes into it before investors even see a deal. And that's why they don't go straight to it because the due diligence is very extensive and not everybody has the time to do that. And then on top of that, you've got your market analysis, underwriting analysis, all the things that make up a, a, a deal before you even see it is what I do in, in my, with my time. Um, you know, obviously aside from the podcast, of course. Right. So all of that goes into it. You see the deal by that point, I've done all my due diligence. I've checked all the boxes, made sure everything passes. And that's essentially the, the structure of, of the deal. And so from that, uh, what a lot of my uh, time is, is networking, right? Going out to conferences, you know, jumping on webinars, being a guest on other podcasts, just constantly meeting people, talking to people, trying to figure out what their goals are, what they want to accomplish, how I can add value to them, right? Is it education? Do they need to learn something? Um, can I point them in the right direction? Not everyone is going to be an investor. And by no means do I view people from a transactional standpoint. My goal is to add value. If you want to invest with me, great. If not, that's fine too. I just want to add value, point you in the right direction. Maybe what I have is not, you know, maybe our goals don't align. You know, a deal that I'm work, uh, raising for right now is all appreciation. If you're looking for cash flow, I'm, I might tell you about this deal just to see, but ultimately I'm not going to be like, Hey, I think you're going to really love this. There's no cash flow, um, potentially some in year three, but you know, it's all upside and you know, so for a cash flow investor, that's not appealing at all. So I'm not going to try to sell them on a, on a deal like that. Right. Uh, you know, I may, you know, depending on how much they have to invest, I may point them in a direction of, a strong operator that I know will provide what they're looking for. And I may not make money on that, right? This is a, a people business and, and it's all about helping people. So that's essentially the makeup of what I do. And then with that networking comes the investor relations, right? Um, you know, I've got an ebook. So pointing people in the direction of my ebook uh, is uh, commercial real estate recession proof. Very, very relative ebook right now. A lot of very relative data in there uh, showing why in a recessionary period, commercial real estate is very uh, resistant to uh, a lot of these economic downturns or the, the uncertainty of the economy. Um, you know, you're talking about a place, you're talking about a need, right? People need a place to live, right? So, um, you know, so pointing them to that, right? So they sign up, they get on my list, right? So then it's a lot of, um, of nurturing and educating, right? Tons of educational content. I've got blogs, I've got the podcast, got YouTube, working on a video series now um, with a very, very good friend of mine, Casey, who, uh, well, it's Casey's idea, but, you know, there's probably 30 of us on this talking about, different aspects of, you know, being a real estate investor. And, um, you know, so there'll be an educational video series that you can have access to. And of course there's books and, you know, other podcasts, right? So all of this kind of encompasses what we call, or what for me, what I call investor relations, which is, you know, talking to them, understanding what their goals are. You know, if they live here in Utah, uh, meeting with them in person, right? I've got a meeting actually on Sunday, going to lunch with an investor, right? And that's part of it. You know, he uh, wants to meet on Sunday. Listen, I'm going to make time to meet with you because I want to make sure that, you know, you're taken care of, you know, especially right now, I'm still in my friends and family. So, you know, this is a, a friend of my dad's. And so, you know, he's close friends with my dad. I want to obviously treat him well, and I'll treat all my investors well, even if I've never met you and you don't know anyone I know, but that's part of it, right? So all of that goes into investor relations and, you know, offering what we call a white glove service, which is essentially, you know, 
helping you however we can, adding value however we can. And so that's in a in a nutshell, the what my job is and what my job consists of. And as my list grows and as I talk to more people and meet with more investors, it will be more and more conversations, more phone calls, more education, right? More blog posts. And along that is helping investors understand what's happening in the economy. You know, what are interest rates doing to um, to our to investor returns, right? Helping them understand that, you know, six, eight, 12 months ago, you know, interest rates were at three and a quarter, four percent, you know, gosh, even two and a half percent potentially, you know. And because of that, you were probably going to make eight percent. Right. So hundred thousand dollars, you make eight thousand dollars a year. Well, because interest rates have gone up, uh, Mr. Investor, unfortunately, now that has taken away from the yield on, you know, in our cash flow, right? Because debt is now more expensive, meaning it costs more to go get a loan because the interest rate is more now. So because of that, you know, my debt payment is higher, which means after we collect all of our rent and all the fees for the month and go pay, there's less money to distribute, which means now you may only be getting a 6% return instead of an 8%, but helping them understand why that is and what's changing and, you know, really keeping in an ear to the ground and, and talking to people who know more than me, economists and, and, you know, other capital raisers and, you know, institutional people, meaning, you know, those who work high up at, you know, big banks and private equity and that, and what they're seeing, and getting an idea of what's happening and helping educate people. And, you know, ultimately, hopefully getting them to see the benefits of real estate the way that I see it, and ultimately, uh, become an investor. So, Hopefully that sheds some light into what I do. I know a lot of people have been curious about what it is I do, how I make money, where my money comes from. Full disclosure, because I have not done my own, um, did do a, well, I'll, I'll continue that thought. Because I haven't done my own official raise yet, I have not actually made money off of a capital raise. Where I, where I make my money right now, two places. One, trading options on the stock market. Um, as much as I don't like the stock market and will decrease my holdings in the stock market over time. Uh, I understand it and um, can make money there. So that's where most of my income comes from. And then also from, uh, I did a deal last year as most, as a lot of the longtime listeners know, I was with the group Greenlight Equity. Um, Shout out to Greenlight, love them. Uh, They're still here doing their thing. uh, they invest uh, in in other markets outside of Utah, but uh, we did what's called a land entitlement deal, where we basically bought this piece of land, and you basically work with us with with the city, in this case Salt Lake, and you work with an architect, and basically an architect does a rendering and basically puts together a plan to build. In this case, it was like a 32 unit multifamily apartment complex. And essentially what you'll do is you'll, you know, typically get the plans drawn up, take the plans to the city, get the land and everything entitled and approved to do this project and then sell it to a developer. And so we partnered on that deal. Um, You know, I put down basically the down payment. We did a hard money loan on the land, got everything done, sold it. And I made, um, you know, I made some money on it, not as much as we were hoping, but um, I made a good amount of money, I'll I'll be honest. And so between all of that, that's what's kept me going. And that's what's allowed me, you know, between that and, um, you know, like I mentioned, in the last podcast, my grandfather passed away, he was successful, um, left us with a bit of money as well, invested that, grown that, um, mostly in the stock market, so between really the stock market and um, a couple of small real estate deals, I've been able to 
focus on my business, focus on the podcast and grow it. And we are very, very close to our first official Katani Capital Group capital raise. And I'm very excited. So um, there you go. There you have it. That's, uh, you know, kind of full disclosure, high level, what it is I do. And, you know, as we continue these Friday follow-ups, we'll get more and more in the weeds. Next week, I'm really going to talk about investor relations and really, really dialing in uh, and what it's like talking to investors and helping them understand the changing economic landscape and what that looks like. We touched on it barely, but we'll get more into it next week. So on that note, have an incredible weekend. Uh, do not forget, you can follow me on Instagram at Johnny Katani. Um, follow us on YouTube, like, subscribe. Um, also, please, uh, if you would do me a favor, I would love it if you would go to, uh, whether you listen on Spotify, Apple, Amazon, Google, whatever it is, go in and rate and leave a review, like a written review. Um, that would help tremendously. I would be forever grateful for that. So on that note, have an incredible weekend. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for listening and we will see you next week. See ya. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching today's episode. I hope you really enjoyed it. Listen, I know it's cliche and you hear it all the time, but please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel so you know when the next video is coming out. Even though this is technically a daily podcast, you know it's coming out the next day. Uh, we have a ton of content coming your way. So please like and subscribe, it helps a ton. Leave comments. We'd love to know what you guys think and uh, we will see you on the next one. Thanks so much.